Welcome back to the Reaper blog. This is what's new in Reaper 6.80. And this is a smaller update, but it is still packed with lots of great features that I will explain in this video. And if you missed any of the previous videos in this series, I will link to a playlist down below where you can go all the way back to Reaper 5.0 and see all of the changes explained. Let's go. And before we get started, of course, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. All right, so first up, actions. Add action to set snap offset for items under mouse to mouse position. All right, so let's talk about snap offsets. That's this little uh, handle at the bottom left corner, which you can drag and change the position where the item will be snapped. So rather than snapping to the left position, if we... Uh, quantize this. Now it will go to that point. So we could drag that. There's also an action, which I have assigned to uh, control comma, and that will put that point there, wherever the edit cursor is. It will move your snap offset to that. But we can now do this through an action that moves it to the mouse position, which is pretty neat. So we're going to search for snap offset. There are a few in here, but the one we're looking for here is set snap offset for item under mouse to mouse position. Assign that, and I'm going to do alt comma. I'm, I've moved my left hand over to the opposite side of the keyboard, and I'm only doing that because I have control comma um, for snap offset. That's just what I've been using. So if I point my mouse cursor, let's say right here, alt comma, that will move that snap offset to that position. Then I can quantize that and it will snap to that position. So again, I'm using the shortcut Alt comma to move my snap offset to the mouse position. Wherever my mouse is pointing, I'm not clicking the mouse. And then I can quantize or drag and that position is what snaps to that grid line, marker, video frame, whatever it is. For takes, changing active take via mouse affects grouped media items and tracks even if those tracks are hidden. So this is sort of self-explanatory in that change log, and this is sort of just making it more intuitive. So if you're doing editing where you've got a lot of tracks that need to be grouped together, you want to hide some of those tracks so they're not visible, not taking up a lot of space, um, and you're still comping, um, you can reduce the amount of track space required by hiding those tracks. And you can still do the comping by maybe just showing like the kick track or just the overhead track or whatever it is. You can switch takes and all of those group takes will still switch together to the same take number, take eight, for example. They'll stay in sync. Whereas previous to this update, hidden tracks might get out of sync by doing that. And this is sort of just a refinement. It was like that when you're using the actions, but now mouse clicking on the different takes will also switch on those hidden tracks uh, to the corresponding takes on those hidden items. Hope that makes sense. It, it should just be more intuitive. It works like how you expect it to work now. For hand scroll and zoom, improve various behaviors. So this is an improvement for the hand scrolling function, which you can find by uh, dragging up and down or dragging left and right when um, in the marker and region lane or on, uh, I have this assigned to middle drag, middle mouse drag, going up and down to zoom in and out and dragging left and right. This isn't a new feature. This is a refinement of this feature, um, which was a little chaotic and a little buggy, you might say. A little weird. So let's look in the mouse modifiers and I'll show you where this is set up in case you don't have this set up already. So I've got this on context, arrange view, and middle drag. Hand scroll and horizontal zoom is enabled, both of these checks. I also have this set up in the project marker region lane for left drag, hand scroll with horizontal zoom. You want to also probably check this reverse horizontal zoom when hand scrolling. So with that on, it looks like this. I'm dragging up and it zooms out. I drag down and it is zooming in and it's going to where my cursor is. It's 
keeping the timeline focused around where I'm looking, really. It's not zooming to the edit cursor, which is my default. You see how that kind of jumped over horizontally when I zoom in? When I use the hand scroll, it's going to always go to that position. And if I reverse that direction, if I drag down, it's going to zoom out. Drag up, it's going to zoom in. And so it's your personal preference which way you go with that. I think most people are going to find that reverse makes more sense. But yeah, I find it much more intuitive now. And uh, I think this is a really nice change. For recontrol MIDI, support loading sysx messages from file. So in the recontrol MIDI plugin, we hit this edit button at the very bottom, brings up this little window. Now there's this save load button. We could load from file. Essentially, this change in, uh, in this update brings it in line uh, in parity with functions in the MIDI editor. So there was a sysx function here. We could load something in, and we've got this save load function here. It was just missing from the, the more real-time recontrol MIDI plugin. For regions, add action to select and unselect all regions for rendering. So let's say I've got this item here, or this region here set to selected. is going to affect region rendering, so selected regions, it's just this one region. There are three regions in this project. If we wanted to unselect all those regions now, search for unselect uh, all regions. You might have to just run this twice because it's a, a toggle for all and none. Yeah, this was requested because it was it was easy to select things in here, but not necessarily easy to unselect all, um, I guess, without opening the region marker manager. Nothing too crazy, but that exists now. For rendering, resolve two periods in render file name for file paths. Support dollar sign directory, dollar sign directory with a number in wildcards representing the project directory parent, the parent's parent, etc. on the disk. Well, what does that mean? Let's go to the render window. Well, we can use the name directory, and that will put in the name of the folder that the project is currently in. If I call this project, there's going to be Dowds and Rust demo underscore one, but directory will be Dowds and Rust demo. Subtle difference. We can also add a number. And now this will use the parents parent folder for this project, which is song ideas and demos. And I could change this to three. Oops. I didn't mean to render it. If I do directory three, then it's just going to be my folder called audio or my, my hard drive called audio. If I do four, that's going to be volumes or the Mac system volume. So it's getting directory names and using them in the file name. Now, the other thing that they added here was the ability to use dot dot slash in the file name or in the directory path to go up a level. Currently, this is volumes, audio, song ideas and demos, diodes and rust demo, diodes and rust, demo underscore one, dot wave. If I change this to uh, dot dot slash, dot dot slash, now I've gone up a couple levels and now it will put it into my audio drive, just the, the root of that hard drive and put that demo there. So this is a great shortcut. Rather than having to browse to a specific directory, you can just put that dot dot slash, then your file name, and it will go up a level. Customize menu toolbar. Display full action description in menu toolbar entry context menu. All right, so this is again a very simple one. We can get to the menu editor in a couple different ways, either from the options menu or right click on any toolbar, go to customize toolbar, and here we are. So if we've ever renamed any of the actions in a toolbar or in a menu, and we wanna see what the original action is, for example, this action that just says show all, just right click on it, envelope, toggle, show all active envelopes for all tracks the track rec set uh, button on my toolbar. What is that? That's track view, track recording settings, MIDI quantize, file format, path for last touch track. This is much easier than having to right click, go to text icon, and then uh, it's not there. You'd have to reset it to back the default. 
to, to get that. So it's much more convenient to find that original action name. Track panels, add preference to use shift key to control whether drag and drop of track panel creates a folder. Now I love this change. I think this is one of my favorite changes in a, a Reaper update. If you don't know what this means, if you're dragging around tracks, very often they will accidentally create a folder and then it changes your mix routing. It's complete chaos. So now there's a toggle and I'll show you that in a second, where if I hold shift, that's going to create a folder at the level that I just dropped that track into. So as I drag this track around, you see this gray line, and that's where this uh, track is going to move to. But if I hold down shift and go under this snare track, the snare track becomes a folder, and the track I just dragged becomes a child of that folder. Pretty neat. Let's undo that. I'm going to move this track up to above the kick. I'm going to select these other drum tracks, drag to uh, just up here until I get that gray line there. And on Windows, it's a blue line, actually. If I hold down the Shift key just before I let go, that's going to make that track into a folder, and then all those tracks I had selected will be a folder. I guess the only sort of like minor nitpick about this is that if you have a bunch of tracks selected and then you Shift drag, that's going to unselect those tracks most likely. Just something to be aware of. You can hold down the shift after you start dragging and, and that's gonna work for you. Now that preference is going to be under the track control panel preferences. When reordering tracks via drag and drop, hold shift key to control folder creation. Changes to effects. Improve anticipative effects scheduling to improve performance with slow media disks. Improve performance of anticipative effects multiprocessing on folder tracks that use PDC. Improve performance of anticipative effects processing in various other routing contexts. So essentially this means that there is more performance benefits for running your effects on folders. So folder tracks, even folders inside of folders, there should be no sort of like performance penalty there now. I've been reading the forum and, and a lot of people are saying that this has been a big improvement. No more clicks and crackles and stutters and things like that um, by using heavy effects on folder tracks. Yeah, that's great. I don't really have a side-by-side -side comparison, but if you have a project that was hard to run before using lots of effects on folder tracks, try loading it again in Reaper 6.80 see if it makes a difference, and report on the forum if not. There's no settings you need to change here. It should just all be automatic and just better performance. Now, the last thing is just a brief mention of something that I find interesting, not really applicable to most users. Support passing rescript on command line, for example, reaper.exe, projectfile.rpp, scriptfile.lua. Support inserting media or running rescripts in already running Reaper instance. So if you didn't know, Reaper can be run through command line actions. And this is great for batch processing, loading lots of projects, running certain scripts and things like that. This has just gotten a lot easier. So if you're using that sort of workflow before you investigated it, maybe it had some limitations that didn't work out for you, check it out again. To use this effectively, there is going to be some coding outside of Reaper that will be required. But you could do something like select a bunch of project files open them all at once, render them all uh, in sequence, and, and put them in a certain folder. You know, you could do something like that. For script developers that use external editors, uh, so they're outside of Reaper, they're writing their code, and they want to test that script immediately in Reaper, they could use this function as well. Pretty neat. Who knows how much people will be using this. But yeah, it's another way of using Reaper without directly using Reaper in a way. So that's it for this tutorial. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, there is a link in the description for all of the playlists. So go back to any uh, Reaper version that you missed. Um, there's tons of changes every single time in every update. So uh, yeah, check it out. Lots to learn there. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. Visit reaper.blog for more tutorials.